Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Solid Garage. So today I'm gonna to be teaching Sasha how to bleed the brakes on a vehicle. We have her 1997 uh, Jeep Cherokee here. Country, super cool Jeep. You like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really like she's it. excited to be driving it. So we're just getting it in good working order. But I wanted to, I'm trying to get her to know all the maintenance and kind of ins and outs of the vehicle. So it's a fun time to spend together working on the vehicle. Yeah. Today we're bleeding brakes. So the brakes on this Cherokee were actually super soft, just real spongy feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Like you push on the pedal and it was just really soft. And that's a sign of having air in your system, air in your brake lines. So here's our brake master cylinder right here. We actually topped off the fluid because it was low on fluid as well. And these are your brake lines, these little metal bars. There's four of them going to all four wheels, right? Now we gotta make sure there's no air in these lines at all. So we're gonna bleed that out. We're gonna uh, start by bleeding the brakes and we wanna bleed the brakes in a certain order. We're gonna actually start with the brake that is farthest away from the master cylinder. So that'd be the passenger side rear. So we're gonna go passenger rear and then rear driver and then passenger front and driver front. And that's the order on this vehicle and most vehicles you just you, if you're not sure you have to follow the lines and see where they go but in most vehicles that's typically what I've seen but there are certainly exceptions so because we're gonna be priming the brake uh, we want the drum on there so that uh, if the pads kind of push out it has they're, they're not just gonna keep going free that the drum and everything is assembled. So we're gonna put that back together. So we're having a little trouble getting the drum on because the uh, shoes are just pushed out too far. So I'm pulling out this little tab here and screwing this down so that I can pull these pads in a little bit, these shoes, and then we should be able to get the drum on. Where the brake line goes in to the back of the uh, drum here, or the back of the brake system, you see there's a little uh, rubber cap. So it should be like a little nipple sticking out. Mm -hmm. and there's like a little rubber, take that little rubber cap off. And that's the little valve right there that we're gonna use to bleed the brakes. So I do have a brake bleeding kit, which is super handy. It has a little, uh, little pump on it, a gauge there. You can put some uh, suction onto the brake and you can bleed it yourself that way, but I'm going to show you the old school way because uh, most people don't have this kit. But I will be sure to link this kit in the description so if you're interested in something like this, um, you can find it. Okay, so we're going to take a glass, glass bottle mm -hmm. and we're actually going to take a little bit of brake fluid and you have to use new clean brake fluid. Uh, not in your waste bottle, this is our waste bottle. So you can put, you know, old fluid in here, that's fine. But when you're adding fluid to your system, which we will be doing, we want to use ni this nice, clean, brand new fluid. So this end here has a smaller opening. First, let's find a wrench that fits over that, see if that fits, and use the box end. Place it over the top of it. Right now, that valve is closed. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna put that wrench on there and have the wrench over that way so that you can open it because if you're opening it, it would turn this way, right? It would turn okay. towards me, right? Mm -hmm. So have the wrench that way so you can lift it up <laughs> and then put it down. Okay. But just leave it closed right now, get that wrench over it. Now put this end of the tube over that little nipple on that valve. Can you try? Is it kind of tight? Yeah. So we're just gonna have to kind of, as you use that wrench and open and close the valve. Mm -hmm. So this will be open, that'll be closed. Kind of hold that rubber tubing so on there a bit, off. okay? So I'm gonna go into the vehicle and we're gonna work together on this. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna tell me when to push on the brake. Oh, I remember doing this yeah. with your Jeep. You can say like push, release. And then when I'm pushing, when I have the pedal pushed down, you can open it. And then you need to tell me when it's closed so I can release. Okay. Watch for air bubbles to come out. So watch that that uh, plastic line, mm -hmm. that rubber line. Watch it real close. If you see bubbles coming out, that's exactly what we want. We want to get that air out of there. And this fluid is nice, new, clean looking fluid. The fluid coming out will be a much darker yellow, brownish looking. Okay. Okay? 
Okay, I'm ready. Tell me when to start pushing. Okay, push. Okay, close it. Okay. Is it closed? Yes. Did anything come out? Yes. Some brown fluid. Okay. <laughs> see these bubbles come out? A few, yeah. So you saw some air bubbles come out. That's really good. And you can see the old fluid uh, going into there. But we also need to check the master cylinder. We don't want to run the uh, fluid reservoir empty because then it'll just start sucking new air into the system. So we had already cleaned this off. You want to clean off the fluid reservoir before you take the cap off. And we had already topped this off with fluid. But we're going to add a little bit more and we're going to keep our eye that we don't run that low. Because if this run runs low and starts sucking air into your system, then you got to start all over. There you can see a bubble coming up the tubing. And one other little tip that one of my uh, live stream viewers mentioned was it's a good idea to have your bottle up above and actually have the fluid coming up. So then you just have fluid up here. It's a little harder for air to run back into your system. I didn't have a great place to set this bottle, but actually I did uh, manage to squeeze it in on top of the leaf spring there. So that'll work. So tell me when to push. Okay, close. And now I'm making sure she has it closed before I release. She's saying we're still getting bubbles, so uh... We're gonna keep bleeding. So tell me when to push. Push. Okay, close. I can feel every time you push. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. Push. Close. So when I get to the bottom of the throw of the brake, that's when I'm telling her to close. Because like I said, you can't let off the brake when she has the system open. All right, so those last few times, we finally got to a point of where we had no air coming out of the line into the bottle. So this one should be bled. And I should also mention, we have the wheels off. You absolutely don't have to take the wheels off to do this. Uh, we had taken the wheels off because we we're just doing a brake inspection. And I was kind of uh, showing Sasha different parts of the brake. Yeah, you don't have to take your wheels off to do this. We're not taking the wheels off on the other side to do it. Go ahead and uh, lower the bottle down. Gently, and you can just set it on those blocks. And the tubing popped off. Here, we're getting brake fluid all over. Oh, so when no. you lowered it down, you see how the brake fluid it, how it popped oh, no. off? It's okay. It smells gross. Mm. Yeah, brake fluid is nasty, corrosive. You don't want to get it on things. Tootsie's wondering what we're doing. So we're going to put this little cap back over the little bleeder valve just to keep it clean. And this one should be done. So we got that uh, passenger side rear done. Now we gotta go do the driver side rear and the other brakes as well, as I mentioned earlier. So Sasha's doing awesome. At her age, she honestly knows a lot more about vehicles <laughs> than I did at her age. I have some dumb stories. I didn't know a thing about cars when I was a kid. <laughs> so you're light years ahead of me. <laughs> All right, we got the uh, wheels back on. We've checked the master cylinders, so the fluid reservoir is full, right? Mm -hmm. So we're done bleeding brakes. Yep. One last super important thing, we need to take it for a quick test drive, but you're not gonna have any brakes. Like the first time you push it, there's gonna be like nothing there because all the brakes uh, are kind of, uh, they're, they're like released right now. They're not, they're not engaged into the disc and drum. So it's mm -hmm. kind of loose right now. Okay. So we gotta kind of prime the system a few times. So let's do that real quick. So because we've worked on the brakes, Initially, after you get in your car, like I said, it's just going to be squishy. There's not going to be anything there. You got to get everything like seated. So go ahead and press, pump the brakes a couple, like three or four times. One, two, three, four. Kind of push hard. Okay. So go ahead and let the parking brake down. Uh, go ahead and put your foot on the brake. Put it in reverse. Okay, good. So we're still stopped. So let off the brake and then kind of stop again just to test it. Okay, so it's working. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's where we're at. You just got to make sure they get the brakes seated again because having the wheels off, having that drum off, bleeding brakes, those kinds of things can release that pressure off so that uh, things aren't seated properly. So 
and I've actually had that issue where I forgot I had done that, got into a car, started it up on my driveway and it started rolling back and bumped into my other vehicle. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> learned the hard way. How do the brakes feel compared to last time we test drove it? Oh, they feel a lot better. <laughs> They're not squishy anymore? No. Good. Really good. Uh, go ahead and stop quick. Mm -hmm. Much better? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and check out my next video right up here. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day. I'm gonna try a hat toss. We got one shot at this. You ready? Yeah.